Aren't you glad today there's only one way? There's only one way. I don't care what Oprah Winfrey has to say. I don't care who it may have been. I don't care how politically correct it may not be. But I'm here to tell you there's only one way. And uh, I want you to know something. change things, have consequences. That's what I was trying to say. Ideas have consequences. You look at uh, when Jesus came, he told us about salvation by grace. And then the, uh, the Darwin came and says, oh no, there's no God. We just evolved by accident. In other words, he says, well, in the beginning there was nothing and then it exploded and then we had everything. That's kind of the theory of, of evolution or Big Bang, anyway. So when, the, you know, Harvard and Yale and those uh, universities used to be Christian schools, but when Darwin came out with his theory, they just said, oh, we're going to have to evolve. And uh, they, they kind of got rid of their Christian uh, professors and started getting evolutionists, and things have kind of been going downhill ever since. But uh, this first song I want to talk to you about is called Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life? How many people heard that? Mm -hmm. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? You know, an anchor is something, a big piece of metal, you tie a rope on it, you throw it over the side of your boat, and then you tie the other end to your boat. And when the storm comes and tries to blow your boat up against the rocks and smash it, it uh, the anchor digs down in the dirt and holds your boat so it doesn't get washed into the rocks. And this song says, will your anchor hold in the storms of life? Okay? It says, when the clouds unfold their wings of strife. We've all had storms in our life. Maybe a spouse has died, or a child has died, or uh, a sickness, um, wayward children, financial problems. There are a lot of storms in this life. Did I say that right? Yes. And uh, if you have a storm, you need something that's going to keep you from going crazy. This uh, song says, will your anchor hold? In other words, it implies that everybody has an anchor, but is he going to hold? Oh. There are a lot of anchors in this life. You got Some people say, well, I've got money in the bank, uh -oh. so uh, I'll be okay when the storms of life come through. Some people say, well, I've got an education, and that's going to take care of me when I... When the storms of life come through. Albert Einstein said, education is what is left after you've forgotten everything you ever learned. Some people say, well, I'm a bodybuilder. So that's going to keep me when the storms of life come through. <clears throat> then in the last verse of this song, it says, will your anchor hold in the floods of death? When the water's cold, chill our latest breath. Here's a, uh, another song. It says, uh, this is called the 12th day of Christmas. A modified version. It says, on the 12th day of Christmas, Jesus gave to me 
eternity that's free. A thousand songs to sing, streets of pure gold, mansions above, a robe and a crown, a body glorified, power from on high, joy for my soul, love for all men, peace in my heart, everlasting life, and salvation full and free. Praise God. Okay, so uh, here's another song. Okay, it says, Rock of ages cleft to me, let me hide myself in thee. Who's the rock of ages? Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Okay, it says, uh, Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Okay, in other words, he said, somebody said, Heaven is not a reward for good people but it's a gift for bad people. We're all bad people, and we all need that gift. <clears throat> if we receive Jesus as our personal Savior and believe that He died for us, then He also becomes our Lord. Yes. And uh, we must do our best to try to live for Him. I had a, a Bible track once. It had a picture of two children walking down a road. And the road came to a fork. And one fork went over this way, and the other fork went that way. Okay, and each one had a road sign on it. And the one on this side, it says, this is my way. I'm going to walk my way. The other one says, I'm going to go God's way. I'm going to walk God's way through life. I had a patient uh, in the hospital quite a few years ago, and uh, he had cancer. I had to come and tell him, you know, your biopsy came back cancer, and it's all through your system. So I, I went and told him, and the man said, well, I thought that's what it was. And uh, that really kind of surprised me because in general, when you tell somebody they've got terminal cancer, they are pretty <clears throat> upset. So I said to him, I said, well, you know, I'm just your doctor for a while, but I notice you have a different attitude about this condition. And he said, well, he says, I know I've got this cancer. And I know I'm dying, but he said, I'm ready. Amen. Wow. Knocked me over. I said, what do you mean by that? He says, well, I'm trusting in Jesus. And when I leave here, I'm going to a better place. Wow. You know, when he said that, there was a, a, like a voice came to me and he says, well, you know, he may be going to a better place, but I'm going to a worse place. Cause I, and I thought, you know, it doesn't matter how much money I have in this life, or how many degrees I have in this life, or how many friends, or where I live. If I die and go out into eternity, and I don't have what that man has, I've missed everything. That's right. I missed everything. Nothing else really matters but to be like that man said. Because, you see, for 36 years I was going down my way. My way. I did what I thought was best for me, what would, you know, help me the most. And I really never thought too much about God or what was, why I was here or what I was supposed to, what's the purpose of life. I never thought about that too much. I was just busy going 100 miles an hour down my way. And when he says, I'm going to a better place, I said, well, I'm, someday I'll have a heart attack, or I'll have a stroke, or I'll have pneumonia, or I'll have cancer, I'll have something, and I'll end up in one of these beds myself. And yeah, I've got to get right with God. So I went to a number of churches, you know, a lot of churches don't even have an invitation or an altar call. And, uh, but finally someone told me that Jesus 
uh, died for me and that I could be forgiven of all my sins and uh, he would come in and change me from the inside out. So I went to an altar of prayer and asked God to forgive me and to save me and to come into my life and give me something real, something, a purpose to live for every day. Okay, so that was a, a changing point. Salvation is full and free. But if we receive Jesus as our personal say, you know that song, it says, God had a son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon, and an empty tomb is there to prove my Savior lives. Praise you. You know, that's a, that's a lot of important ideas in there, that Jesus bled and died, the just for the unjust. He bled and died for me. And I receive that. And because I receive that is <clears throat> taking my place on the cross, and I owe him everything. I owe him everything. He says, I've been bought with a price. Not of corruptible things such as silver and gold, but by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We've been bought by the blood of Jesus. We belong to Him. Amen. Okay? Amen. And that's uh, what we've got to uh, concentrate on. And this one is called the Lighthouse. How many people have heard the Lighthouse? The Lighthouse. It says... Uh, there is a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks life's sea. Okay, it looks overlooks every, all of life. It's overlooking it. And when I toss, it sends out a light. It is a light that I might see. And the light that shines in darkness now will safely lead us o'er. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, my ship would be no more. The next thing it said, well, you know, in other words, we go through life and there are storms and problems and then all of a sudden Jesus shines his light on us. Now, we work at the American Family Association and sometimes we're trying to figure out, well, what should we do? There are a lot of problems. What should we be doing? And a lot of times it's hard to figure it out. But... This song says, it says, I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to him. For Jesus is the lighthouse. And from the rocks of sin, he has shown a light around me that I could clearly see. That's what I like that word, clear. Sometimes you get an idea, but it's kind of foggy and you're not sure what, what we're supposed to be doing here. But Jesus says, I could clearly see, the song says, that I could clearly see. And if it wasn't for the lighthouse, tell me, where would this ship be? Do you know what we're doing? This is talking about getting right with God. The whole song, Jesus is a lighthouse, and he shines a light so that we can see, hey, I don't want to go over here on the rocks and get smashed. And so we receive Jesus, and Jesus is the lighthouse. Hallelujah. Now, this song has got another verse to it, and it's sort of like reading the newspaper today. Okay? Let me read this to you. Uh, now, everybody that lives around us says, tear that old lighthouse down. The big ships don't sail this way anymore, and there's no use of it standing around. Yeah, what do you, have you ever heard that type of thinking? Oh, no. yes. Okay. Yes. The big yes. ships don't come this way anymore. In other words, the big shots are not oh. really oh. that interested in, uh, in Jesus, in honoring Jesus. There, okay, we got what they call the establishment. Oh. Okay, the establishment isn't really that interested in Jesus. And so they went, and guess what they did? They took prayer out of our public schools. Did I say that right? Okay.